Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. I'm bringing on a bite-sized pieces today. Interesting stuff. First up, Ledger wants to help MicroStrategy secure its 400 million Bitcoin treasury. And what this means is that Ledger is going into the institutional vault business also. Bitcoin decouples from legacy markets as breathtaking rally predicted. And we're going to take a look at is some analysis from Kraken and how this is all going to shape up as far as the traditional market and cryptocurrency and digital assets. Also on a cautionary tale, a blue cartoon shilled Wi-Fi that made a million dollars in vanish. And this is a great example of why you shouldn't go chasing shiny objects. And we'll go over a cue of the day where the question is, how can someone buy Celsius if they're in the United States? And we'll take a look at today's market. Before we do that, I want to say congratulations to Eric Hoover for grabbing the Kobo wallet plus the $150 unstoppable domain credit. So Eric, congratulations. One of the reps from Unstoppable Domain is going to be reaching out to you to give you that credit and also to set up the delivery of your Kobo wallet. So before we get into all the stories, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is October 13th, around 2 p.m. Texas time, looking good. So what do we got today? Bitcoin, tumble a little bit, 11.4, but only down 1.3%, but still up 5% for the week. Ethereum also down 2% roughly at 378. And hey, I'll take those numbers. Tether's Tether and XRP's XRP. Bitcoin Cash, 4.3% and 13% for the week. Looking good. Congratulations to all you Bitcoin Cash holders. Looks like you may be in the money. Binance Coin up 0.1%, but also 8% for the week, so not too shabby. Chainlink almost hitting that $11 mark, but it's down 5 almost 6% for the 24-hour time frame. Hopefully it can rebound a little bit more. Polkadot down. It looks like everything's down for a little bit. Uh, Crypto.com, 4.8. USD coin. Ah, USD coin, stable coin. Uh, Monero's down. Everything's down. OKB, OK, Stellar, da, 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 da. So this, not a great day. A little bit of red, but not too massive like we are used to in this space. So uh, we'll see how it rebounds. Let's uh, break into today's top stories. First up, Ledger wants to help MicroStrategy secure its 400 million Bitcoin treasury. So what's going on here? So Ledger is mostly known for its consumer-facing hardware wallets, but since last year, a number of enterprises have also begun to use Ledger Vault. According to the company's vice president of product, Jean-Michel Pelhon, I think I nailed that name. So what's going on here is Nano Ledger, which everybody is used to by now, I think. Most people are. If you don't have one, you want to store one, there's one. Uh, there's a link in the description. But this is what we're used to uh, for the retail side. Nice little cold storage wallet, very small, almost like a data stick. And, uh, you know, I've got like four of these things uh, for all my different cryptocurrency, and it works great. But that's just for the retail side. But they also have another product called Ledger Vault, which I was not familiar with. And apparently that is for big players in the space, uh, institutional investors, big, large money, uh, so they can actually store their cryptocurrency and digital assets. So who is this good for? Well, it's good for somebody like MicroStrategy, who just bought almost half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. So there is that portion of it. And then the article goes on to state that more recently, Square, who just acquired 50 million worth of Bitcoin, has developed an in-house open source sub-zero framework to secure its assets. And that's what's great about being Square. Uh, they are a tech company, so they can do these types of things. They can create them to store their digital assets. But if you're looking for something a little bit more out of the box type thing, this is what Ledger is obviously doing for the big money players. So Ledger will set these up for you or its clients, and that they don't necessarily need to know how it works. They just need to know or use the solution. So the VP of operations uh, did a walkthrough of onboarding a company like MicroStrategy. He said that one of the first steps would be to decide how many people will be involved in authorizing transactions. A typical setup would require two of three signatures, where perhaps the CEO, CFO, and general counsel all hold one signature each, which I think is pretty cool. Because that way, there's no one point of failure. You have multiple people who have to sign the transaction. If they do not sign the transaction, then of course uh, the cryptocurrency goes absolutely nowhere and there's an even a way to stop everything altogether. I think the coolest thing also is that parts of the private keys can be stored in several physical vaults or I'll just say in one place. So you can have them spread out multiple places and of course you have to bring them all together 
to have your private keys. So this is how they do it. When a company officer wants to initiate a transaction, he would log into Ledger Vault and input the desired transaction. Then a notification will be sent to all three signatories. To approve it, they would have to log in and connect their Ledger Blue hard wallet to their computer. Finally, they would enter the unique Ledger Blue pin to sign the transaction. Which I have to tell you, if you are somebody who is uh, in the uh, business, the nefarious business, kidnapping people, extortion, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these people that have all these keys, now they're targets. And it almost sounds like a like a bad James Bond movie, you know? You got to collect these three people just to get all the money. But I, I mean, seriously aside, though, um, I do think it's a very safe way to do things. Again, and s instead of having one point of failure, you could have three, five, ten, however long, however many uh, you actually wanted to. And they could all be uh, signees, especially for very large transactions like what you have here with MicroStrategy and, you know, also even with Square. So Ledger provides the back end and takes care of the uh, infrastructure and the clients act as their own custodian. This may present a problem as some companies may be required by law to use a regulated custodian. The VP says, if you need a regulated custodian, you can always ask a regulated entity to become one of the signees in the transaction process. And that's actually a pretty good thing because you have to have some kind of custodian. I know people don't like regulation or for people to get involved, but in all honesty, uh, this is the problem. This is one of the problems with cryptocurrency is that uh, it was in Canada. I think it was Quadrica, Quadrica CX, BX, something like that. One of those exchanges, it was the CEO or the owner had the only set of private keys kept in his vault or somewhere. And he took a trip to India and he died, allegedly. Um, so all the money that they had in this exchange just poof, disappeared because that's uh, where they had it, which was just on one person, which is almost ridiculous if you think about it. So in this type of thing in, in the U.S., they say, hey, you can't do it. I don't know about how it is in other countries, but in the U.S., you have to have a regulated custodian, somebody who can oversee the whole process. And it's not just one point of failure, just one person. Because can you imagine just uh, losing like, uh, you know, MicroStrategy says, oh, you know what? We just misplaced the key. We uh we had this card for our private keys and we just misplaced it or it got wet. And now we can't read the words. So you're gonna need some high grade infrastructure uh, and this vault sounds like it could be uh, a good one. So the whole point here is that Ledger is not just in the retail space. They are getting into the bigger players of the game. And I think it speaks volumes about where this industry where this space is actually going to. Now there are so many different institutional players and big money coming in that we see companies that were just for retail branching off and going, you know what, we can service these types of people because you know we have the ability to do so. And there's so many of them coming in, then we have a new business model. So if you're looking at what smart money is doing, well, obviously it's getting cryptocurrency digital assets so much so that it is creating a subsector uh, for custodianship of large amounts of digital assets. And that's the main point that I got from this article, that there's just so much going on that it's going to lead to all these different advancements. So let me just think in the comment section. Let's move on.